13 and 14 this morning. Um, talk, and when we get to this portion, the children of Israel are getting ready to leave uh, Egypt. And uh, the Bible says in verse number 17 of chapter number 13 of Exodus, And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, let's peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. As I was looking at this and looking into just thinking about devotions this morning and uh, in my studies and my reading, I was thinking about how God leads us. And God here in verse number 17, he led them away. He led the children of Israel through a path and he said, you know what? They're not ready to see war yet. They're not ready for this in their life. And I, I appreciate the Lord in that fact of that. I believe that he, I know that he does that in our lives. He says, wait a minute here. You're not ready for those things to come. It's not time for you to understand and for you to know those things. So I'm going to take you this way. We're, we may look at it and go, Lord, but that's a direct path right there. Why are we going in a securitous route? Why are we taking the long way around this thing uh, when we can go straight right here? And the Lord says, and we just, we're following him. And I think sometimes we question that in our mind, maybe a little bit, but God says, you know what? I'm doing this because I'm the one in charge of what's going on here. And we have to trust the Lord for this, but he led them, the Bible says in verse 18, uh, through the wilderness of the Red Sea and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. Uh, I love that thought right there. They, they were ready to go. They were packed and loaded and heading out. And uh, Moses, the Bible says in verse 19, took the bones of Joseph with him for he had straightly sw uh, sworn the children of Israel saying, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones hence with you. And they took their journey from Succoth and encamped in Etham on the edge of the wilderness. I like this next part as well, just talking about the Lord leading us in verse number 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Verse number 22, he took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before his people. And today we don't have the pillar of fire. The children of Israel, they, they were able to see the cloud during the day. They were able to see the fire at night. Uh, some say to keep them, help keep them warm at the same time as to provide, I call it a night light for them, a little bit of security along the way. But you know, I'm glad that the Lord has given us his word here today that we, we, we don't, he's not taking it away from us. Even people that do not readily have access to it still have memorized portions of it, still have some people we've heard that they, they just have pages of it, just a small portion, but God has still given them that light by which to guide them with. And I've seen the videos of people in foreign countries when they first receive that Bible and they've not had one and how much they take it and they love it and they care for it. We even talked to some of our own missionaries and I feel that sometimes we in America, we mistreat our Bibles and the, these other on the foreign in the foreign countries, the people have not had them. And so they treat them with a great deal of respect and a, a great deal of honor and, and they take care of them. You say, why? Wow, because it's our light. Yes. It's how God leads us. It's how God directs us. One of the things that being with Rock of Ages has taught me and they, they are is what's the verse of scripture God has for the next move in your life? Where is that at? And you say, why? Because this is the light by which the Lord leads us. And if we saw there in the first part of that, that God said, you know what? I'm going to take you over here because you don't need to see that just yet. I believe it takes some maturity on a Christian's part sometimes to realize that, you know what? It's God leading us this direction. Come down to verse number, uh, chapter number 14 and verse number one. And we get down through here and we're, we're um, Verse number one says, The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before uh, Piharoth, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal Zephon, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. Now look at this. The Lord is telling Moses what's going to happen. The Lord's telling Moses what he's getting ready to do. For Pharaoh will say, The children of Israel, they are entangled in the land and the wilderness to shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Now, if you continue reading on down through here, you get down to about verse number 10 or so. God has told Moses what he's going to do. 
Now, whether or not Moses communicated with that with the people, we don't know. But God's told Moses what he's getting ready to do. Pharaoh's coming after you, and I'm going to whoop him. I'm going to take care of business. Now, God, I don't believe, gave, at this time, we doesn't show that the Lord gave Moses the battle plan for the situation. He just said, you go and camp here, and I'm going to take care of business. So Moses takes and leads the children of Israel by the direction of God and encamps at this location that God has sent them. And then you come down to verse number 10, and what, like I said, I don't know if Moses communicated and said, hey, children of Israel, Pharaoh's going to come, but God's going to deliver us. But Pharaoh shows up in verse number 10 and on, and the children of Israel get scared. Now, my friends, if we're allowing God to lead us, and I realize in our flesh there are times that we are going to get scared, but if we're allowing God to lead us, should we not trust him that he's got a plan for the situation that we find ourselves in? I'm afraid that many times, myself included, we, we're following the leadership of God, and God says, I want you to go this way. And uh, we, we, in our immaturity, in our childish state, we get to that place, and then trouble comes and we go, Lord, what are we going to do? And God's like, just stand still. I brought you here. I'm going to take care of you here. If you'll just give me a little bit of time. You say, what do you mean? If you go and you read this account, it takes a little bit of time here. And God moves his pillar from in front of him to behind him and blocks the way so that Pharaoh cannot see and get to the children of Israel. God then opens and parts the Red Sea and they go through on dry ground. But this morning, I just want to, just as we think about this and think about God leading us, he numbers, first off, sometimes he keeps us from things we're not ready to see. But then I think the place that we find ourselves more often than not is right here. He's led us someplace and we're afraid of it. My friends, this morning as we look at this passage, God delivered his people and he wrought a great victory. And it's a Bible story that we tell to children. And today, I mean, it's something we learn in Sunday school, something we hear time and time and time again, how that God delivered the children of Israel, but yet in our trouble, we forget about it. Don't know what God's got for us. Don't know what God holds. Don't know what tomorrow holds. Don't know what this afternoon holds. But when trouble comes, know that God has led us to this point and that God will take us on to the next point. Whether he delivers us here, like the uh, three Hebrew boys said in, in Daniel, King, we're not bending, we're not bowing, we're not breaking. We're going to be delivered from your hand one way or the other. Either God's going to allow us to come through this fire alive or we're going to be burnt like crispy critters but we're coming through it and we know that God will get him glory. So whichever the way the situation, know that we're just be reminded God's leading us and he's the one in control and he's the one in charge. And just be, take, take comfort in that, take rest in it, that he's the one there. And no matter what the situation looks like, the enemy is right there going to kill him. The children of Israel look at Moses and say, you brought us out here. There were no graves in Egypt. Pharaoh's just going to kill us right here and let the sand bury us. And Moses said, stand back and see the salvation of the Lord. Next time it comes, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Father, we love you. We thank you for the day you've given us today. Father, thank you for this little bit of devotion. Let you be with us. We go about our daily business. In Jesus' name we pray.